this is a Canon 100mm f2.8 L macro lens. So being a macro lens, it takes macro photos at one times magnification. So what happens if we bundle this with an extension tube? Actually, two extension tubes. Alright, so using a macro lens with two extension tubes would give you some pretty insane results, I guess. So before we get to the extension tubes, let's see um, what do we what will we get out of just the macro lens at magni uh, maximum magnification. So I got a tripod here just to keep things nice and steady, and our subject for today will be a 10 ringgit bill. This is Malaysian currency. There's a 10 ringgit bill, that's how big it is. It's um, five and a half inches across and two and a half inches down. So pretty much the standard size of a bill. So one thing about um, 10 ringgit bills is it has a lot of very small details. So we'll be using this macro lens to see just how much detail does this um, bill have. So I'm going to switch to photo mode. I'm going to stop it down to f8. Shutter speed 160, ISO 100. Now because for macro photography you would need a lot of light. Otherwise the photo would become very very dark. So I've got myself a Yongno 560 speed light to provide that lovely light source. Alright, so here is how it looks like up close. Now, this is full life-size one-to-one -one magnification. Now let me show you what a normal shot of this bill would look like. So this is already very, very much magnified. So let's put on one extension tube first and see how much extra magnification we'll get out of that. Now because at um, macro at um, macro distances, your depth of field would be ridiculously shallow. It's very hard to get things in focus because your depth of field is just so tiny. So I'm gonna stop it way down to f11. Now this is one of the cheap extension tubes which have no um, electronic contacts. So that means I will lose IS, I will lose autofocus, and I will lose control over iris. So the moment you detach the lens, it goes, uh, it opens up to f2.8. So a little trick to get it to stop down to f11 when it's detached from my camera would be to set it to f11, and then I will hit the depth of field preview button, which is um, just beside the lens mount. While keeping it hold, it will stop down the lens to its respective aperture. I have it on f11 now, so when I have my finger down on the button, the lens is now at f11. Now the key is to keep your finger pressed on the button, and then with your other finger, detach the lens while it is locked in depth of field preview mode. So with that, your lens stays in f11 once it's out of the body. Now, although this is a neat trick, I'm not responsible if you screw up your lens using this method because obviously this is not how you're supposed to use a lens like this, but it works. It works. So I'm going to put on a extension tube and then I'll mount the lens back into the camera if only I can find a mounting index. All right. Put this up a bit. Now I'm going to try and get the same framing as just now, again at closest distance, so I'm going to focus on the same region. And do remember to turn off depth of field, I'm sorry, um, exposure simulation on this, because if it's enabled, things might get a little dark, especially your preview. Now my LCD is very dark now, I can't really see anything. So I'm going to bring down the lamp and... I really can't see anything. All right, that's good enough. And there's the shot. So if you look closely, we are in much, much closer compared to that first shot without the extension tube. 
So let's check what's the magnification ratio on this. Now I'm using a EOS-70D here. So the sensor is an APS-C sized sensor, which is 22.2 millimeters across. So I'm going to take a shot of this ruler here and I'll see how many um, millimeters is it across the entire frame. So I can use that information to calculate my magnification ratio. Now this is a bit dodgy. All right, so as you can see from here, this is 12 millimeters across. So the magnification now would be 22.2 divided by 12 divided by 12, and that gives us 1.85 times magnification. That's 0 0.85 times more compared to just the macro lens. So we're gonna go one step further, and we are going to add one more extension tube. Get this in. I'm mounting an extension tube on another extension tube. Now this is highly not recommended, but sure, give it a try if you're very bored. I'm not gonna try and get the framing right again. I feel like I'm using a microscope. All right, let's take the shot. Now that is insane. Now the little bits of word you see, BNM, RM10, you can't really see that with your naked eye. It's almost microscopic. It looks like a few specks if you're looking at it with your naked eye. So that is some serious detail it is revealing there. Now let's calculate the magnification ratio of this. My oh my. What am I looking at? What am I looking at? Now that was five, six, seven, eight millimeters across, just eight millimeters across. So let's do the math. 22.2 divided by eight, and that is 2.775 times magnification ratio. So that is almost three times magnification ratio, which is some insane magnification. Now, I'm gonna show you how insane that is. I've got a piece of tissue paper here, I'm gonna tear it a little bit, and then I'm gonna try to photograph the bits where it tore. So, I'm gonna try and get in focus once again. All right, so that is a tear of tissue paper at 2.775 times magnification ratio. Now you can actually see the individual cellulose fibers that the tissue is made up of. So this, at this level of magnification, you are really revealing a lot and a lot of detail. Now for me, this is mind blowing, this insane macro. Now Canada has a 65 mm macro lens that can go all the way to five times magnification ratio. Now I haven't actually got hold of one of those yet, uh, but I can imagine at five times, that would be simply insane. So that's it for today, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little weird uh, macro on macro on macro video. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.